Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Witch Doctor with me, Kagekaze. Um, going through, but before we do, wanted to update you. That was unintentional, by the way. <laughs> Worked out, though. Got a couple new weapons. Got myself an offhand. As we can see here, it is neither yellow nor has a socket. Yet it is much better. I like this. 5 to 7 damage is going to bring my damage up. And of course, 67 intelligence matches, beats the gym that I already have in here. Now, I'm going to lose that 1% chance to immobilize. I, mm, I think I'll miss that, but uh, I'm not entirely using it. I think if I were using something like, if I had fast attack speed and maybe Reign of Toads, that immobilization might really be helpful, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and get some damage up since we're still fairly early into the game. Got myself a nice yellow dagger, put a gem into it so it eclipses the damage that I previously had. We can see here it also gives me a wonderful benefit of additional mana regeneration, and it has even more damage converted into life. And I love the fact that it's got 106 vitality. Why do I like vitality? Well, because my pets are going to get that vitality. I am going to get 1,400 life, almost 1,500 life from that. I already got almost a thousand life from this, so yeah, let's put that on. Look at that. I've doubled my life. My health bar is at the halfway point. <laughs> wow, that was a significant jump. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to salvage these two. Just get our gems back. I don't need the items anymore. And we're going to go ahead and continue. And my, my, my. You know, I have to say, it has been a fairly busy last couple of days when it comes to Diablo. And I wasn't expecting that. Let's go out into the... F well, hold on. Let me heal, and we'll go out to the fields, and we'll have a chat. This is May the gods who abandoned us come to your... Okay, so apparently the forums over on the official Blizzard site have been quite active. And apparently uh, some posts have gotten the attention of game designer Travis Day. And he had quite a bit to say about Diablo. And I have quite a bit to say about not having dogs. Actually, no, I don't. It was just that one sentence. It's okay. There was so much there, in fact, that I don't think I'm going to be able to do it justice to talk about it now. I'd have to kind of have it open in front of me, because it was a lot that he said. Everything from items, to skill balance, to, I mean, even future plans and things like that. Um, and it was kind of inspiring to see, really, because it gave you an idea of what they were looking at, what they wanted to do. Now here's the downside. It was another one of these long-term goal posts. Which means nothing that they talked about is anything that we're going to see in the near future. We're just not... it's, it's going to take a while. And it's, it's that frustrating part about these conversations when they get involved and they talk about these things. And... You want to see more, right? We, we, we all want to see more. We want to know what's going to happen. We want to see the next patches come out, the balance changes happen, the, the game to become more and more interesting. And they keep teasing us and teasing us, really, ad nauseum, practically. I want to see more from this game. I think, in its own right, right now, in its current form, Diablo 3 is a great game. I really do. A few hitches here and there, and he actually talked about some of the pitfalls that they ran across, and one of those pitfalls was, admittedly, the auction house. Uh, though not in the way you might think. Not that they thought it was a bad idea, but they realized what the auction house did as far as paradigm shifting the game, just completely away from really what they intended. And, and this is the beautiful thing, is looking at this, they talk about wanting people to need healing. Need healing find their own items again. And I love that idea. Okay, and I'll go ahead and I can talk a little bit at length here about the auction house. I don't use it. 
you've all seen that. I really don't use it. I, I think on occasion I've looked up items uh, for my high-level characters, my barbarian pretty much, my high-level character. And if I just had this long spurt of not finding anything, and maybe I had an idea in mind for changing gear up, and it was going to take forever to shift the gear around, you know, for example, I went from a tanking build with a sword and board to a two-handed build, or um, at one point I tried dual wielding, you know, to see what I liked. And unfortunately, finding the gear I needed was taking a bit longer than I really wanted. And so, yeah, there'd be an occasion where I'd go out on the auction house and find something on the cheap. Because, let's face it, I'm a cheap bastard. I'm very poor. Okay, it's five million. But seriously, talk to anybody who plays this game. Five million's pocket change. All right. So, you know, I would go out and find some cheap items. But most of the time, I like to find the stuff on my own. Now, occasionally, I'll be given items. You know, from people I've played with, from friends. And it helps. But obviously, I try to avoid getting anything super massive. Because what part of, the, of playing the game that I enjoy is finding stuff. I find that to be what Diablo is about, really. So if you go out and buy something on the auction house, right... Then what's the what's the drive? What's the incentive to actually continue playing? If you have bought all of your gear, why do you need to play? Aside from the general wanting to kill enemies. Okay, there is that, and I do believe that will keep some people interested and keep playing. It keeps me playing to a point. But there's always that want, that desire, to find that really cool item that might change things up. And that's another thing they talked about was legendary items and what they do. They're talking about better item affixes. And this comes all again full circle to the auction house. Let's talk about this auction house. Uh, I don't care for the auction house. Nor do I hate it. I think uh, having it there... <sighs> You know, having it there, I guess, could be part of the issue. Since it's there, people have a desire to use it. Not their fault, really. I mean, it makes sense. It's there. Use it. I mean, that's kind of the idea, right? Why not? I mean, why not? I mean, it's it's there. It's There's no penalty for using it. You don't lose achievements. You, uh... No one really cares where you got your gear. I mean, unless you're doing an Iron Man run or... doing a particular challenge. Sure. But I don't think the big problem is the auction house itself. Okay, let's let's talk about this. A lot of people... Could, there have been arguments about the auction house being pay to win. That's not true. The auction house is pay to get what you want right now. Much like many a free-to-play game, the auction house is only there to speed up your progression. It is to help you get the items that you are missing at present, and you want, and you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time getting. My argument has been, a lot of people, again, blame the auction house, but I don't blame the auction house, I blame the items. And it's not necessarily the item drops, because people have said, well, maybe there needs to be better dro or more drops. And I'm like, no, there doesn't need to be more drops. You know, I've played this enough that I it doesn't need to be more. There, I get tons of items as it is. I've run through millions of items. And people will be like, well, they need to be better items. Well, okay, that's partially true. I think the problem is, when you're looking at items, you're looking for a very specific set, right? Most people want to build around damage, and unless you're... Unless you're building a tank build. I mean, there is that. But a lot of characters desire damage. They want the damage. They want to be see big numbers. And the idea is that you kill the enemy faster than you survive longer because then you have less incoming damage because there's less enemies. And so a lot of people build high damage builds based around killing elites. Yeah? That's pretty much it. So the problem then becomes, what increases damage? Well, that's pretty much your primary stat, strength, intelligence, dex. And okay, this is the entrance, but we don't have the staff. Oh, okay, it's right over here. 
critical chance, unless you're building an obscure build like, uh, let's say, my uh, engineer who uses Sentry. I really like that build, by the way. I need to rebuild it. My engineer, or my engineer, uh, my demon hunter is um, not quite max level. Uh, the Unfortunately, when I got my demon hunter to max level, it was on PTR. Uh, last time the uh, I made that sentry build. So I do need to get her up, but and I do plan on making probably a non-crit build just for that. Although crit can be nice for certain abilities. But for primary builds, for builds for almost every class, we're talking about building a whole bunch of crit, and then once that becomes less useful, building a whole bunch of crit damage. So that pretty much limits you to only one type of gem to put in your weapon, which is emeralds. No one cares about rubies. Although the rubies have been buffed recently, so they're, they work really well. And they work really well for abilities that don't scale for crit. But that, that's it. That's part of the solution right there, right? They've got better items now for non-crit builds. But most of the builds out there are focused on crit, crit, uh, crit chance, crit damage, uh, primary stat, and then attack speed. Though, those are it. You're looking for what people call the trifecta or the quad trifecta. You know, basically a perfect roll of all the stats that you want. If it doesn't have those stats, you could consider the item useless. I don't think that's exactly right, and I don't think it's exactly fair to blame the auction house for that and the fact that it's very hard to get those. You have to think about it. There's so many different affixes in this game that getting those four in a row is quite difficult. It takes a really good drop, and that is why you see so many items that drop on the ground and are pretty much useless to you. Hmm. Getting close to level. That'll be... Nice to get that soon. Oh, oh, that was... Ow. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to potion up. Just do it now. Get the dogs. Give me dogs. Thank you. Oh, this could be fun. And by fun, I mean terrifyingly painful. Shielding and frozing. Okay, frozing. <laughs> oh, right. So it becomes very difficult to get the gear you want, because the truth of the matter is, almost everybody wants the same stats. It, the only difference between any of the classes is the primary stat. You know, a wizard, a barbarian, a witch doctor, you know, a, a monk, we all want critical strike, we all want attack speed. We Well, maybe not witch doctors so much on the attack speed, because they're of their uh, mechanic that... Uh, Basically, the primary on the Witch Doctor is the only one that doesn't get, have a free attack or give back a resource, right? Been... All of the primary abilities on the Witch Doctor cost. So therefore, high amounts of attack speed are kind of painful to a Witch Doctor unless you can support it in other ways. But that's like the one exception. Everything else, those are the primary stats you want. Unless you're going for a very specific niche build. I don't see that as the auction house fault. Now, the whole reasoning for putting in this auction house, right, was because there was a lot of background trading going on even in Diablo 2. I didn't do it. I certainly didn't know about it, but I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't there. Because the truth of the matter is, that stuff has been around since the dawn of people being able to trade on the internet. You want to buy and sell characters? It happens. MMOs, they do it all. The people will try and buy and sell characters, items, for real money. It happens. And so Blizzard's thought was, hey, you know, if people are going to do this anyway, let's give them a service so they can do it. And this way people don't have to go to shifty third-party sites. They have a guarantee that what they are buying will actually be theirs and that the money will not be scammed from them. It's the same thing with selling gold. Buying in-game currencies for real money happens in practically every game that can, you know. I, so I don't fault them for the reasoning on that, but unfortunately, what did this lead to? This led us to an always-on system that a lot of people equate to a always-on DRM, and again, I have said before that yes, I agree with that. It pretty much does count as a DRM. Steam is a f DRM, for crying out loud. A lot of people don't give Steam a ton of flack for it, though. 
Um, but the truth is, you can put Steam in an offline mode. As to how useful the offline mode is, I couldn't really speak for because I don't... Really, again? I don't use Steam in offline mode, so... I don't know. Can't speak for it. I don't like um, making assumptions off of something I can't really vouch for. Uh, feel free to make your own arguments if you want in the comments. But that really led to this. And whether or not that was the true final motivation that Blizzard had of implementing Always On with Battle.net, I don't know. I can't speak for Blizzard. I'm not the Blizzard Whisperer. But that is one of the reasons they gave, and I have no reason to truly disbelieve that, because I can kind of understand that. You get a, a place where you've got all these items that can be bought and sold for real money. You know, you essentially have a system now where we're dealing with real-world currencies in a game, so you want to keep that secure. I understand that. But it did create other problems. Such as the infamous, uh, you know, day one errors, where no one could log in for the longest time because of, what was it, error 34? Uh, right. So the problem is that the auction house makes it very easy to get exactly what you want. You want that item that's got, you know, tons of crit chance, crit damage, attack speed, and 5,000 of your primary stat? Hey, why go farm? Go to the auction house. Put in your parameters, and at the click of a button, you have found that one item that you want. Fantastic, is it not? But that completely kills pretty much the whole point in farming. And this is where a lot of people basically kind of found... You would basically get this issue where a lot of people pretty much say, hey, where's the in-game? Because, you know, the item hunt's not there. Why is the item hunt not there? Well, because of the auction house. Because what happens? People will find those perfect items, and they don't always want them. Maybe they have better. Maybe they don't want it now, and they want to sell it so they can uh, get other items. So there's the availability. It's there. And so, therefore, um, yeah. Blizzard was not expecting... Ooh, yay, there's the level. Blizzard was not expecting everyone to get through the game as fast as they did. For example, let's look at the monk in their one with everything ability. One with everything is pretty much considered mandatory for monks at this point. Right? Why not? Free resistance, hallelujah. But in their internal testing, they didn't really think about that. Why? Because in their internal testing, they didn't have an auction house and they didn't have a lot of people with a bunch of items. Even if they would have had the auction house up and running on their internal servers, what would have led them to believe that it would have been an issue because when you're dealing with it in-house, you've only got a certain number of people. You don't have millions, and that is how many people were selling items. We're talking millions. You've got a, you know, several million uh, su subscriber base here, millions of people that bought the game. There's going to be tons of items out there. And thus, people were getting items that they wanted that worked with one with everything right away instead of having to rely on the drops. The reason they didn't think it was an important, you know, as so important or as big of a deal as it ended up being was because they weren't finding that gear right away, and there you go. You can't think of everything when it comes to testing. You're not going to think of every creative way that a person is going to make a build. You can throw out a game that only has, let's say, 10 skills in it. And you could think that you may have thought of every single possibility that they could combine those skills with. And someone will surprise you still. They will find some obscure way of putting the skills together in some order that you didn't even remotely think of. Maybe with an item that you thought would have been fun, but uh, you didn't realize that it would have an extra effect when combined with certain synergies. That's what happens. So again, the problem isn't necessarily with the auction house on that. It's the being able to get the items that you want right away, and again, with the fact that you only need a certain subset of stats. They need to make the other stats more attractive, and they're talking about that. Now, for certain classes, witch doctors, again, 
you have certain abilities that are kind of nice to have. Let's talk about increased pickup radius. Increased pickup radius is not exactly, um... It's meh, it's blah. Who cares, right? Unless you're a witch doctor, and then all of a sudden you've got abilities that are based off of witch uh, off of pickup radius. So I have the ability, such as Circle of Life, to be able to summon zombie dogs in a particular radius around me because I have inc increased pickup radius. Great, that's a niche build. That makes that a fix useful to a subset of players. The problem is making it useful to more people. Uh, health globes, uh, giving more life. Okay. That's uh, kind of mediocre. If you've got a build that gives you more health globes, I can see that being good. Um, but the fact that they added the ability to, to affect potions as well. That's a start. Because, let's face it, potions were pretty much useless once you hit a certain amount of health. So there, they're, they're thinking about it, they're trying to get it done, but it's still not quite at the level it needs to be. If they can come up with more abilities that are useful, that and, and it doesn't have to always be about damage, right? Not raw damage, anyway. It could be about survivability, it could be like, oh, that was a bad move. It could be about some way of increasing your damage or your potential, other than just getting bigger and bigger numbers. Maybe getting faster numbers or something. I mean, that's, that's still rudimentary. But there's, there's ways to do it. Yeah, I can't touch him. Unfortunately, it takes someone far smarter than I, because I can't really come up off the top of my head exactly what they might need to do for that. But this is why Blizzard employs some very smart people. I think they can make it happen, and we, I think uh, we'll eventually see it. Unfortunately, it may take an expansion to get that fully realized. And let's face it, Diablo 2 did not really see its renaissance until Lord of Destruction, and even then, it took months, maybe even years after, to truly hit the stride that every that everybody, when they talk about Diablo 2, they talk about the last version of Diablo 2. No one really talks about launch Diablo 2. There seems to be a little bit of a nostalgia, a um, kind of a forgetfulness when it comes to old games that we all love, that we tend to forget how bad things were in the very, very beginning. Diablo 2 suffered from similar problems and, you know, had issues. So I anticipate Diablo 3 will eventually fix a lot of issues down the line. I'm just hoping that some of the more glaring ones will see a, lot, a little more love before that expansion hits. Because here's what's going to happen, right? Once you get those items, more items for, for uh, that will be useful for people to find, then you create this situation, well, great, now not everybody wants the same stuff, and so now you, they need to go out and find more items. And they're also talking about ways of making it so you can find more items out on the field, that will be useful, and uh, one of the steps in this direction is, of course, the new crafting with Demonic Essence. You can't get those items on the auction house, and they're some of the best Once items. Dead. Below, that damn fool was killed trying to communicate with the Khosra, and then the cultists showed up. As soon as I saw them, I ran. I wanted no part of their dark magic. I heard the screams of my companions, but there was nothing I could do to help. Oh, I'm surprised I never found that book. So anyway, that, that's kind of my long, drawn-out conversation about the auction house. I don't blame the auction house, uh, nor do I blame item drops. It's not the drops, it's the random system, okay? That is really the problem here, is the random system. Everything is so randomly generated that you have such a low chance of getting those stats that you want. If the other stats become useful, then people might be willing to go out and find items again because they might find this thing that works for them without needing to find this trifectra, quad, whatever the heck have you, tra. Really, that's, that's where I see the issue being. All right. I leveled. So let's move beyond this conversation for now. Let's talk. Talk builds. What have we got? 
I've got a new zombie dog. I've got burning dog. Zombie dogs burst into flames, burning nearby enemies for 2% of your weapon damages fire every second. Not bad. 2% every second it isn't terrible. What's what's this one? This is 9% weapon damage over 3. So that's pretty much 3% weapon damage a second. So burning dogs is less damage per second compared to rabid dogs. However, burning dogs is an AoE. So that hits far more, and I think that's going to be far more useful than rabid dogs. So it's going to get rid of my final gift. Okay, that's fine. We'll get burning dogs. And I think I'll go ahead and keep my zombie handler to give me more dogs. That's more AoE, correct? So uh, we're going to get rid of Gruesome Feast. And we're going to go ahead and pick up the new passive. This is Vision Quest, which was redesigned quite a while ago. I didn't get to try the original. Which, uh, the original Vision Quest apparently increased your mana regeneration rate by some insane amount when you had, I believe it was two or three abilities on cooldown. So it, you, it kind of enforced this build around using all the large cooldowns and then just using vision quests and spamming zombie bears, pretty much. Um, it wasn't that great. It, it was not that great gameplay, to be honest, because what it encouraged is it encouraged you to blow all your big cooldowns right away to get the, the mana regeneration. And so you basically had these really great cooldowns that you really didn't care about using because you wanted the mana regeneration. So they redesigned it. So instead, whenever you deal damage with corpse spiders, firebomb, plague of toads, or poison darts, or pretty much any primary, your mana regeneration is increased by 30% for 5 seconds. So great, that gives us quite a bit of mana back, and it doesn't matter what primary we use, we could use whatever we want. Um... Am I using base? No, I'm using flash fire apparently. Okay, that's good. I imagined that the hero of prophecy would be more lively. Look, I'm lively. I just don't wear a lot. All right, so what else do we get? We got a cooldown ability. So I'm going to have to adjust things around here, I think. Let's go ahead and work on soul harvest. We're going to turn this into Fetish Army. So what did I get? I got Devoted Following. Decreases the cooldown of Fetish Army to 90 seconds. So, 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 so. 30 seconds reduction. So instead of two minutes, it's a uh, minute and a half. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm really going to care, but okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll try it. It's part of the whole thing here, right? Where we're making builds, making things happen. All right, if I'm going to get, have a whole bunch of mana, and I got rid of my uh, Gruesome Feasts, I don't need Grasp of the Dead anymore. I think I want to have some nice high damage abilities. I think instead of Grasp of the Dead, let's grab something from Decay. I think maybe a zombie... Three zombie chargers, each deal. Hmm. I think something like this would be nice. Something that does quite a bit and is kind of costly. Acid Cloud is 150, isn't it? I may not even need the zombie charger if I keep putting down a whole bunch of Acid Clouds. I'll tell you what. Let's do Wall of Zombies with the grip. We'll go ahead and spam either Acid Cloud or, or Charger. That's a good question. I have been I really like Blob Bomb, but let's let's go back to Wave of Zombies. Hold on. I want to see how that worked. I don't recall off the top of my head how that felt. Alright, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to use a bunch of mana. Oh look at those dogs. Those are that's pretty cool. Glowing with a righteous fire, they shall damage everything in their path. Alright. Okay, yeah, it's kind of a spread. So my mana regeneration currently is pretty good. I mean, you can see here I'm uh, picking it up quite a bit. So let's try and keep my mana low, and then I want to hit something with my flash fire. And uh, let's, let's see what kind of regeneration I get. 
I don't think that counts. Alright, here we go. Let's just see what happens. Hmm. It's not bad. You see it goes up pretty quickly. Now that my vision quest is gone, I'll do it again, and you can see, yeah. It's not bad. Okay. So I might not be able to spam it endlessly, which I think that was kind of the thing about vision quests previously before it's redesigned. It allowed for a near endless supply of mana. So this makes it a bit more balanced, I feel. Honestly, I also think it helps with making better builds. Because when your build is based around just blowing a whole bunch of cooldowns and... Well, I don't think that's quite fun, really. I mean, what's the point of having a cooldown if you're not really going to use it other than to give yourself mana? Alright. So, um, what I'm thinking uh, is I'm going to probably do some kind of uh, secondary video where I'm going to go over everything that Travis Day said. I want to talk about it. Uh, I think I also want to kind of talk a bit about the console thing and everything outside of... And, and the big point, part about this, I want to do it outside the Witch Doctor video. I kind of want to make it its own thing. Just to kind of give it a discussion piece. Because not everyone's going to come to a Witch Doctor video to try and find a massive discussion on these topics. Those of you who follow me know that's just one thing I do, right? I like to talk about what's plaguing Diablo at the same time what's good about Diablo and ways that things could improve. I like having these kind of deeper conversations about the game itself. But it's, unless you come here a lot, you don't know that I do that. There go. A lot of people that might be interested might not stop by. So we're going to try and do that. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look around the place. Okay, the door. <laughs> to me, you beasts, yes. To, the, to him, beasties. Wow, look at that. Not bad. Let's get a bit more regeneration. Vision quests last for a good amount of time here. Just every now and then have to... Use it again. There we go. I like it. It's working, although I wonder if I want to go back. I like the charger. I really like the clouds, though. Alright. I am going to... No, not slow burn. I'm going to, do, I'm going to go back to blob bomb for now. And I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go exploring. And we're going to try and find uh, some interesting places to visit. I what would drive someone to become a cultist. They must be terribly sad. Well, I found me the Cave of the Moon Clan, level 1. I also found myself a resource regeneration shrine. I just want to show that I can pretty much spam <laughs> combine vision quest with a resource regeneration shrine. And um, this is one of the best things to happen to a witch doctor, really. These new shrines are fantastic. I am very glad that they added something like that. Oh, here we go. More books I haven't found before. Enslaving the Goatman was easier than I anticipated. My magic seemed to reignite the savagery deep within them, and they flocked to me in hordes. A few escaped, those who understood the fate of their people. But they are too weak to counter my spells. <laughs> the Moon Clan attacks at my command. I find it interesting that I haven't found that before. I know I've heard that. Wow, even with all that mana, I can't stop him. I guess I would need to have a... Instead of that, maybe I should have had Zombie Charger, because that's 205... 240... What does this do? It's still 250. I guess I just don't have the damage yet. Oh well. 
So I think what happened is uh, I just haven't found the books on this character. So that just means I haven't recorded it yet. Because I know I've heard some of this dialogue. Probably on the Barbarian, which would make more sense. Spamming lots of poisonous blobs is very fun. I'm enjoying it. This build is working. Vision quest is quite nice. We'll have to see if I continue to use it going forward. Oh, here we go. We've got some kind of unique... What have we got? It's obviously something electrocuted. Plagued and electrified. Okay. You, go ahead. No. Get a wall. You get a wall. Everybody gets a wall. Everybody's covered in bees. You're covered in bees! I haven't used that line in a bit. <laughs> I'm not in Act 2 yet. Don't worry. That line will be recurring once I get back to Act 2. I hate those bees. With a bloody passion, do I hate those bees. Okay, um, you know what? Let's use my cooldown. There we go. Apparently they glow yellow. So cooldown reductions make you glow fancy colors. You get a fancy suit. Apparently they get a t wonderful hats. No, they don't. That's just their hair. So no, no hats. But a fancy yellow suit. That is what I have trained for. You trained for electrified spiders? Really? Apparently your profit guy thought of everything, because I certainly wouldn't have trained for that. Alright, let's move on and find more points of interest. What is your homeland like? The jungles are lush and rich with life. I would like to see it someday. Yes, I will guide you. Do you see that enemy over there? Let us cleanse it from this land. Nothing like a double pack to ruin your day. Waller, Mortar, Frozen. I imagine this is what uh, hell is going to be like. I suppose that's kind of analogous, right? That this is kind of hell. <laughs> Alright. So far, so good, though. And I think that's the last of them. I learned much from that. Zalax the Gorgon. Yeah, that's it. Well, that was a tough fight. A lot of running around, but uh, not bad. Jewel crafting, ruby, blacksmithing, couple blues, a yellow. Excellent. And we're walking. We're walking. We're looting. Alright, quick item update while I'm here. Uh, looks like uh, really nothing really good here. I pretty much salvaged everything. 
But I did find this. Looks like it's going to be a replacement for me. Uh, strength and Vitality. Why? Well, 48 Strength is 48 Armor. As you can see, it gives me 0.7 Protection. And the 19 Vitality is kind of important to me right now, too. I want to have more life. want to have more life on the pets. Especially considering I'm not using very many defensive abilities right now for the pets. Uh, so this, as we can see, 0.7 protection, 285 life. I'm going to lose 66 damage because of the 4 to 8, but I think I can live with that. Now that being said, what do we have here? We have a 53 vital for her. What I'd like to do is give her this and see if it increases her damage from 75. If you insist. Okay, it goes up to 86. So that's good. She can have that. I'm also going to give her this. She's got a dagger that does 60 DPS, and it has 44 intelligence. This obviously is 10 less DPS, but it has 115 compared to the 44, so more than double the intelligence. That's going to boost her DPS through the roof. As we all know, or well, maybe you don't, if you don't use followers, every primary stat is multiplied by 2.5 on a follower. So that's over 200 intelligence for her. Oh, apparently she can't use... Okay, my apologies on that one. I thought she could, because she can use two-handed weapons. She can use staves. And things like that, but apparently pole arms are not something she can use. So, all right, well, I feel silly, but that's okay. I really thought she could. Lesson learned. Spirits howl. What is this? Spirits are at peace. The last Metroid is in captivity. Galaxy is at peace. Last, whatever. Old school jokes. Seriously, I know people don't come here for good jokes. They certainly don't get them. I'd say they should get a refund, except for they don't pay for this channel, do they? No, it's free. People submit themselves to this for free. boys playing over there. Can you see them? I do not see them. Never mind. They must be dead. Right. Right. Seeing dead boys, that's perfectly normal. Nothing wrong with you. Two, nothing's wrong with you. Three, nothing's wrong with you. Four, Lucy, I'm home. Lucy, you let the mansion go to hell again. You got splaining to do. Oh dear. Uh, dogs. And, um, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Let's try that again! Uh, oh dear. I tried to walk through them, but I think I accidentally ended up I clicking on them. That's where Force Move comes in handy, and, uh, why I don't have that bound anywhere at the moment, I don't know. Well, minor issue, as I managed to come out of it unscathed. Nice large battle. Really, giant groups like that are uh, probably this build's, one of this build's uh, strong points. The dogs putting out constant AoE. I can lob tons of poison damage down, and then I can put a wall up to trap them into it. It works. Then I can just kind of sit here outside the door and just put a bunch of stuff inside the room. Oh no. They're starting to leak out. Alright, time to dodge the lasers. It's like Mission Impossible over here. Not doing too bad. Um, that is impossible. Returns to me. There we go. Potion was on cooldown, so it was 
Glad to get that. Let's go ahead and grab this one now, too. Oh, touch that laser. So what are they? Arcane shielding, right? Yeah. Now there's only one, so it's pretty much just arcane. Not a big deal. Not even a waste of my cooldown on this guy. Oh, I'm surprised he hit me. You know what? Back off. Health returns to me. And it's done. Things to us. I seek another man, a prisoner in rags. Yes, the man with the golden eyes. I saw Magda take him into Leoric's old torture chambers below us. Rest now. I will punish Magda and her cultists. She is as heartless as those she serves. I have not seen so much blood since the Vigeri held summoning rituals. All right, I'm on my way to finish off the butcher here. We are going through the cursed hold. Only have two of the two of six souls per here. Well, here we go, one more. That'll be three. So we're halfway done. Then we'll be fighting the warden. But in the meantime, I've leveled again, so I'm actually level 41. So we'll actually have two levels to go over this time, which is nice. Only two abilities obtained this time. I got to change up my uh, wall of zombies. I now have creepers. Up to three zombies will emerge from the ground and attack nearby enemies for 25% of your weapon damage as physical per attack. So it means I can use my wall of zombies offensively. Now the way it's worded, you would almost think that it completely replaces the wall. So what we're going to do is uh, let's find a group. Let's see if that's the case. It may just be an addition, so we'll put that down. There we can see the wall is up, but there are additional zombies kind of crawling on the ground there. You see it? There they are. So that's nice. See, I was really afraid, looking at that ability, looking at uh, creepers, I really thought that, oh, that's going to get rid of the wall. I mean, it's kind of nice that uh, you get some zombies following you around attacking, doing decent damage. 25% for a pet is pretty nice. Um, but I was really afraid of losing the wall, which is kind of my defensive ability. I mean, granted, that would make for an interesting build if you made it work, maybe into some kind of pet build, you know, make it an additional pet. But I don't have to worry about that. So I've got a wall of zombies, plus the will attack. So I can actually put the wall down and use it defensively like I have, and if I put the wall down right, it also does damage for me. The other ability is for sacrifice. I've got for the master. I gain 2,055 life for each zombie dog that is sacrificed. Now, since I have 6,000 life, I only need three dogs to give me full health. So let's go ahead, and I'm just going to go ahead and take a bit of damage here, intentionally. Trying to, anyway. Well, I want, I want to get hit, and I can't get hit. What's going on? Here we go. Sacrifice the dogs, and there we can see I've got full health. I don't really care for the ability, to be honest with you. Um, it's a nice cooldown for if you need help and that's what I'm going to use it for in this build I'm not going to just I'm just going to I'm not going to just not use it okay I'm going to go ahead and try it we're going to put it in this build and see if I can't find times to use it I've got four dogs so even if I lose one dog uh, I can still use it to gain full health even at hell if I even lose two dogs that's still quite a bit of health coming back if I need it so I'm going to save instead of using sacrifice as a defensive ability or I'm sorry as an offensive ability this time I'm going to use it defensively. So basically I'm going to try not to hit Sacrifice unless I need health. Now this could be bad because zombie dogs tend to die. One would think that this would be better if I were to change passives up. Like uh, they've got increased health with Zombie Handler which is nice. But maybe I should have something like uh, Jungle Fortitude or something to give them more defense in order to make sure that they're always there when I need some kind of defensive cooldown. That's a possibility. But I kind of like the way everything else is working so far with uh, Vision Quest. I'm, I'm liking the damage I can put out there, and quite honestly, I just can't see myself getting giving up Spirit Vessel at this time. 
Actually, I'm not sure there's ever going to be a good time that I can give that up. It's just saved me so many times. It's hard to give up a give out of jail free card. It really is. I mean, and that's what it is. Let's face it. I mean, you basically, it's like, hey, you would have died, but hey, instead, why don't you go ethereal, not take any damage, and run like hell? Alright, let's go ahead and use those for a little bit offensive there. There we go. Wow, that does quite a bit of damage up there, actually. So those were the only two spells I got, so no major game changers here. I actually like the new wall of zombies. I think that's going to be quite nice. It's going to allow me to do a good amount of damage when I lock enemies in, and I've been uh, doing my best to lock them in when I can, if there's a narrow passageway or anything like that. So we're getting close here, so let's go ahead and try and get to the Warden. Time to deal with the Am Warden. Take this guy out, and then we'll break out of here like Shawshank. That is to say, through the sewer. Something like. Okay, took a little bit of damage. My dogs are not ready to come off cooldown yet. Uh, you know what? Yeah, blow them up now. Let's just play it safe. Okay, wall down, box him in, dogs back up. You know, I find it kind of funny, you know, when I look at his name, it says he's the head jailer for Leoric, and I can't help but notice that his head is in a cage. So, he jails heads, right? Is, is, that, is that the visual pun we're going for here? I suppose it makes sense. He did like to behead people, didn't he? Look, I can't help but notice these things, alright? I question it. I question authority. Boom. A dread foe lies before us. Are you ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. So ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much means we are here at the Butcher, where we will be winding down. Possibly another long one. I've been recording for a while, but there's been a lot of empty spaces that I know I'll be getting rid of. So we're going to fight the Butcher. Put down a wall of zombies to possibly do additional damage. Unfortunately, getting hit by the hook already. That's no bueno. Move out of the way. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly use a healing well to... Yeah. Zombie flesh good. Human flesh better. Yeah, well, you're not getting this human flesh if I can prevent it. Ah, come on. All right. Ah, oh, jeez. Again? Need help. To the well. Okay, so as we are fighting the Butcher, since this is going to take a while, obviously, I guess we can go ahead and wind things down. First, I'd like to go ahead and mention, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you, of course, as always, for watching. Um, hopefully you may have noticed that the quality on this video has increased compared to its predecessors. As uh, I have increased some resolution options that I use to encode my videos in Sony Vegas. I have the home version, not the pro, so it's uh, taken some getting used to getting uh, some high quality video out. Alright. Uh oh. I'm glad that's up every time he does that. Okay, I'm gonna blow up the dogs and summon some more. 
Uh, so first and foremost, what you might uh, you might not be able to notice right away, but um, one of the changes that have been made is basically the video will no longer be in 1440 by 1080. That is not true, 1080. Uh, the true is 1920 by 1080, and that is what I am rendering in now. I have fixed the issue that prevented me from doing that. Uh, what issue might that be, you might ask? Well, uh, that was the highest resolution that I could encode in for uh, Windows Movie uh, Files, WMA. And the reason why I chose that format was because if I did anything else, if I did any resolutions higher, then I was venturing into MPEG territory, MP4. And uh, whenever I tried to encode something in MP4, the colors were all off. Everything was so dark compared to what my actual video looked like um, on my screen. And I, I, I couldn't figure it out, didn't know uh, what to do about it. And I finally found some options that really helped with that, some color correcting options. So this video is using those. The other videos this week, uh, my Path of Exile... and uh, my Torchlight 2 video, as well as my Poseidon video for Smite, uh, have all used these new options, and I think they make it look much better. It may not be as noticeable in this, uh, in the Torchlight and the Path of Exile ones, I don't think it was as noticeable either, but it was there, and I, I could see the difference, and I'm very happy with the results. The Smite one was the most obvious one, though, because there was so much movement, it wasn't as blurry, so I'm hoping that you guys will notice it and you will enjoy it and it's good. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, keep an eye out here because there's going to be a patch for uh, there's going to be a patch for Hawken coming out and a new mech. I will be purchasing that mech, giving it a try, giving you my thoughts. It will be better than my Reaper video, I promise. Um, and hopefully the new settings will make it look better because one thing I noticed when I put out Hawken videos is that they very they appear, appear very blurry and they don't do the game justice and the game doesn't look very good on the videos I put out so hopefully that will make it look much better for you guys yeah so that's great uh, I was really glad to uh, get that fixed and that may have been a preemptive uh, yeah don't worry I'm running I'm running I am a coward so, ladies and gentlemen, if you felt the, the conversation this time around was worth it, then I highly ask that you please like and share the video. Uh, I think it was, you know, definitely a worthy discussion to have about the auction house, and I want to go deeper into this whole thing, as I mentioned, to put out a video that won't be tied to the Witch Doctor, and so I'll probably be doing that pretty soon. But I definitely would like to get some civil discourse going regarding this and getting the ball rolling. Uh, the auction house has definitely been something that's been very divisive for the community, and I just look forward to seeing where this game can go with some proper changes to the itemization. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, cursor's going off the uh, screen. I apologize. I'm still running in an extended windowed mode, so if I move too far to the side, the sound will cut off because it's going off into another monitor. I apologize for that. Not bad. I've got the butcher. Oh, okay. I tried to put a wall, and apparently, give me some health, will you? Apparently, it was too early to do that, so. Well, this is going well. There goes the butcher. I really didn't have much of a problem with him. Let's see what we get. A gladius and a ring. I am hungry. Do you have any Lara's bread and sweet wine? Oh, I have a dried lizard here. It is much better. Well, it was worth a try. <laughs> Two problems with that. One, is this really the time to be asking about food? Well, he's the butcher. That, that's impeccable. <laughs> the butcher. Let's talk about food and meat. Um, 
And then, of course, the dried lizard. No, let's not go there. That's that's innuendo I don't want to venture into. So let's just take a look at what I got from the butcher. I got a couple other items, though. I don't think we'll be that good. Well, we'll find out here. Oh, wait a minute. Rare Helm, 133. Strength, Int, Vital, Experience. All the stats are already an increase. All I have to do is take the gym out. Hmm. What do I lose? Uh, maximum mana, and I lose a bit of regeneration. Okay. Well, the regeneration is going to suck, but the life protection is going to be nice, and it's got some damage. So, all right. Yeah, I'll hold on to that. That will be worth it, I think. Uh, some gloves with vital gold, life regeneration, and critical hit. Uh, it's got good vital, but I don't think I want to take down my int too much just yet. I already have some crit as well. The gla uh, gladius is the cut reaper. Intelligence vital. Hit damage, or critical hit damage increase, and... Damage dealt converted to life. Well, that's not bad. If I put the red gem in there, it might make up the difference. It might. If it doesn't, then I could probably give it to the Enchantress. Let's see. 86, 66, 68. Yes. No, 44, 73. No, something's still missing there. Well, the gem is missing. Let's put it over there. We'll look at that later. And I have a ring with strength vital and regeneration no not looking like I'll be keeping on to that I've got a few assorted blues here I'll sort through that uh, later rather than taking the time here so we'll go ahead we're gonna go grab Tyrael so yeah again uh, really kind of like the conversation on this one looking forward to going into a bit more um, and definitely want to see where the discussion leads regarding this because uh, you have to keep in mind here I'm doing this all live commentary and I don't exactly have a plan in front of me any kind of ledger or really notes I kind of do this as I go whatever topics I found to talk about for the you know during the videos is what I talk about or something that happens to come to mind as I'm playing you know maybe some kind of spark of inspiration uh, so when I do a video that goes over everything, I'll have kind of the notes in front of me and I'll be talking about points as they're brought up and should have a little more structure. But again, hopefully um, this kind of brought to light a little bit of what I feel or think about uh, the state of Diablo presently. Alright, so I thought I'd just go ahead and do a quick update regarding the weapons here. We can see that I didn't find any upgrades. I've put on the new helm. Oh, I do find a 53 uh, intelligence ring. Actually, I didn't even notice that a second ago. So that's going to go on our enchantress here. Go ahead and give it on this one here. Let's see, what do we get? 86 to 105. Excellent. So we'll get rid of this one here. As we can see, the weapon, unfortunately, did not live up to what I thought it would. So the intelligence, not quite enough. Um, and fortunately, it's less vitality. But let's see if it would be good for her real quick. She goes from 105 to 124. Great, so I did find an upgrade for her. So go ahead and salvage this one. And I think we're good to go. At this point, what I'm going to do is leave us with words of wisdom from Covetous Shin. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say again thank you for watching. And I'm going to see you next time. Where do we go next? To the Great Desert? We go to Chaldeum. Chaldeum? Yes, the Great Jewel of the East! Chaldeum is not actually a jewel. I knew that. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From glen to glen, and down the mountainside. The summer's gone, and all the flowers dying. Tis you, tis you must go, and I must bide.